How's it going Blue Arrows? Welcome back to Jack's FS videos. Today we're doing a full manual flight from Anchorage, Alaska to Homer. So then, this is the first FSX video we've actually done since the relaunch. We've done a couple streams, but first video. Um, which I just wanted to, you know, show you guys that I haven't forgotten about you in terms of the videos. Um, right, so let's see here. We're going to do an auto start because this video is going to be manual. Again, but the challenge will be on this one that I'm not going to use the GPS or any navigation system as well. Previously, I've had the GPS up here when I've done these sort of manual flights. And this is actually a challenge. One of, your, one of you guys suggested this to me. Um, because I've done manual flights before where I don't use any of the autopilot. Um, and I've done, obviously, flights before where I have. But this time, the twist is that there's going to be no GPS up, and I'm not using any other navigation to help me. Um, and basically, I'm just going to be using my sight to find where, where we're meant to be going, which I'm already thinking, which direction are we meant to be going in? I need to get an overhead view of the airport here. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, basically, Homer is there. Right there, I believe. Very snowy up there, though. Um, look at that, look at that uh, like sunrise coming through, or sunset, whatever. I guess it's both, isn't it? Because the Arctic is dark for six months and then light for six months. Uh, anyway, so we're going to be basically just be using our sight to get to there. And when I looked at the high altitude airways, it told me, it told me to go this way, like round to, or like along here, down here, and then a sudden left turn like that. I mean, it didn't take me straight over like this. So I don't know if maybe, I mean, I looked on Google Maps, I don't know maybe it's because these are uh, national parks here and they have, you know, fly zones or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's the route it took me. So we're going to try and follow that general route. So we're going to go like along here, down, and then make the left turn in. But I think we actually will have to sort of wrap around further to, um, to get in. Um, although actually thinking about it, I mean, let, let me just show you this on Google Maps real quick. Uh, so, yeah, Homer, there we are. Uh, so, yeah, the runway is facing this way. I'm hoping this is going to be a big enough runway, or big enough airport even. Um, but the runway faces that way, pretty much the same direction as uh, the airport that we are at here. Not pretty much, to be honest, but in the general direction. Um, so this is looks like it's going to be the active runway, this one here, 22, which means that even if we come down here, we might still have to make that left turn cut over there and then land I don't know we'll see what happens um, but that is the active runway we could always ignore that if we want because I'm not using ATC this one um, yeah completely manual <coughs> excuse me so let's hit play on that uh, what view do we want what's it doing we want spot that's what we want so this is also a bit of a throwback we have Continental Express I don't know why all my lights are on but let's just leave it for now this isn't going to be a realistic flight at all, as you can already tell. So we want to get back up, uh, push back to the left, I believe. Let's release the parking brake, push back, and one. Okay, we're moving already without the push cart. That's good to know. I specifically got this space because it's got a push back cart. Because not all of them do. I mean, it seems like most of them around here, though, do. Uh, but yeah, I don't know why that's not working. So yeah, not a realistic flight, because we're not using autopilot, we're not using navigation, GPS, uh, we're not going to use ATC, it's going back to the very basics really, um, I mean this technically could be realistic if I was doing it in a smaller aircraft, you know a light aircraft with say four seats, uh, that could be perfectly realistic I guess, uh, except the ATC part, you still have to use that, but yeah. It's only because we're using this uh, this size of aircraft that makes it unrealistic. Uh, so like I said, yeah, a bit of a throwback to Continental. The airline that no longer exists. Things have got taken over by uh, United, or merged with United, I should say. Uh, let's go for this runway here. I think that was the active runway for today, when I uh, originally loaded in. Uh, and yeah, and not only this is sort of a double throwback, I guess you could call it, because not only does the airline not exist, but this wasn't even their latest livery. This is a very old livery. 
Alright, so let's stop it there. So engine's already on. So we're just basically go, gonna go. We're just gonna go, guys. That's what we're gonna do. Um, so I will spend most of this flight outside of the cockpit. Um, you know, in the external views, I think. Just even make it that little bit more challenging so that I don't see altitude. I mean, I think that's what the person suggested. I uh, like that's the impression I got to stay outside the cockpit. They didn't explicitly say it in the comment, but that's the uh, impression that I got. I mean, really, if I'm going to be doing this properly, I shouldn't spend any time in the cockpit. Then I can't see altitude, I can't see speed. Um, you know, I can't even see my primary flight display, my um, horizon indicator thing. So, you know, all my heading even. So, that would be the most realistic, but we're not, uh, I don't know if we're going to do that. We might do, off, we'll, we'll decide once we're in the air. So, I'm going to make a right turn here. Hopefully, we don't hit any aircraft because we're not using ATC, like I said. Bit icy on the, uh, on the taxiway. I think I turned on all my anti-ice stuff, so that's good. So look, even the strobe lights are on right now. All my lights are on for some reason, but we're almost at the wrong way, so I won't bother turning them off. See, this was a... Uh, I was actually planning to do this in a... Let's just make a quick left and right look. Uh, I was actually planning to do this in... A, what's it called? The Majestic Dash 8. That's what I was originally planning to do it in. You know, they always make these right turns a little bit too steep. <laughs> look at look at that line. No one's going to follow that yellow line around there. You can never make it. You always have to go earlier. But I was going to do this in the Dash 8, but um, it wasn't working. Um, I haven't used it in absolutely ages. Ages and ages. And um, I like got it out to start it all up and everything, and it just was not working. I mean, I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but I've set, I've, I've used it before, and I've set it up all before, and it's worked fine. So it wasn't working today. So I thought maybe I'm miss, I'm missing something. So I looked at the manual, I looked at some tutorials, um, written and video, and I just couldn't seem to find out what was what was going on. I mean, it didn't seem to be working so I mean I couldn't even get the APU to turn on like in the in the manual it says press the APU power switch wait five seconds and the uh, the start switch will illuminate and even that didn't happen and that was the first of like 20 instructions and it just wasn't working the engines won't even start so uh, I might need to like reinstall it, it might be corrupt or something um, but yeah I was originally going to use that aircraft and use um, the Alaska Alaska Air livery, because this Continental one is the only livery with any significance to Alaska. The fact that it's a USA airline. Right, let's go then. Uh, let's go inside the cockpit for takeoff. I think. But once we're in the air, we're on our own, guys. Here we go. I guess if we're doing this manually, like I say, I guess we should actually go outside. Oh, it tells you anyway. I was going to say, so we should go outside so I can't see the speed. <laughs> and just, I've got to estimate when I rotate, but the voice says it on the outside. But anyway, gear up, flaps in. Uh, I don't really fly at Alaska much, do I? I did actually do one episode here, down just down there. Uh, it wasn't too long ago, a couple months ago, maybe two, three months, uh, where I did a belly landing in this exact aircraft, actually, not this livery, um, I don't think, and, yeah, it's just down there, so, we have been here before, but, certainly not in northern Alaska, maybe I should go try out some episodes up there. Right then, so, this is the island, so, we need to make a small left turn. Decrease our speed because we're getting an over speed, and we're basically going to follow along this section here. This flight won't be long at all. Um, I think it's only about 40 minutes in real life, 
that's it, you know. So it's not very long at all, this flight. And I think only one airline actually operates it, operates it in real life, but I can't remember what it was. But yeah, there we go, we're in, we're in the air, basically. There's a nice uh, cruise ship down there. And a lot of mountains. I have set this to winter time. I don't really fly much in the winter. Always just manually select uh, summer. Just by default, I just select it every time. And I even selected for this, and then I was like, where's the little snow? <laughs> I thought Alaska's just full of snow. It's like, oh, it's on the summer. Obviously, I know it's not full of snow all the time. During the summer, like Anchorage wouldn't have any snow, I'm pretty sure. Maybe further north it might, but definitely not here. Right. See, it's so annoying. I want to go into the cockpit and just check my altitude. But yeah, we're definitely not going to use the cockpit, I don't think. We're just, we're not. I've just decided, guys. We're not going to use the cockpit. Which does make it a lot harder. Because I just want to go inside and check my altitude, you know, <laughs> like, and check. Uh, you see, I haven't even set myself a cruising altitude. Just to make it even, you know, not harder per se, but just to make it more that I'm not tempted to go inside the cockpit, you know, to check my altitude because there's nothing to check it against. Right, so we're going to fly along this coast here, I think. And uh, we will cut it in the air, but I do, I do promise you guys, alright, I'm sure you guys can all trust me, I do promise that I will not be... Uh, looking in the cockpit or whatever but I will simply be cutting it just so uh, you guys don't get bored that's all it is I mean you don't want to be too high on this sort of flight anyway like I said it's only about 40 minutes long you don't want to go to like 20,000 feet it's pointless um, I'm not sure what's going on with this uh, coast down here, this coastline it's a bit um, all over the place yeah, so a little update on the channel then. Uh, might as well, while you're here. Um, and this will be the final time that I s like, give these updates, because I've done them in every video and every stream so far, just so you basically all know what's going on. Um, basically, streams will be every Sunday. Almost without fail. I can't guarantee anything. Um because, you know, things can crop up, um, but because I'm doing them weekly now, they are more likely to miss, I am more likely to miss one every now and again. As for the monthly ones, I don't think I, I think I miss one, you know, out of almost a year. I think it was 11 months, actually, of streaming, of monthly streams, and I think I missed one, and that was because I had, had a exam the very next day. Uh, a 9 a.m. exam the next day, so I didn't really want to do a stream the night before when I needed to be revising. Um, so yeah, that was I like I always made sure because they were monthly because I didn't do them often. I always made sure that I got there. You know, I always made sure I didn't miss them and I did them at the same time, same place every first Sunday of the month. And except one month, I think we started an hour early. Um, but yeah, that's. That's what I always made sure I would do because I thought they're not that often, you know, I can't just go and miss them every couple of months, can I, you know? Because then you'd be waiting around two, three months for the next stream. So the thing with weekly streams is that I will say right now, I am more likely to miss the one every now and again. I mean, I missed one last week, not last week, the week before, because of the World Cup, for example. You know, I did think England were going to be in the final, so I just said straight up, it's cancelled. Um, because I really did think they'd beat Croatia, but a poor second half. Um, so, but I did want to watch it anyway, even if England weren't in it. So I did cancel that one, and I'm sure a lot of you guys were watching it. You know, I, obviously I know not everyone, but I'm sure quite a few of you were watching it. So you wouldn't have wanted to watch the stream either. You would chose the football over the stream. Fair enough, because you know that's only on every four years. My streams are on every week now. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it, you know, so I'm just going to say that they aren't going to be on 
every single Sunday, but I'm going to try my best to do it. I mean, I think I'm even going to be streaming on my birthday this year. My birthday is on a Sunday this year, 2nd of uh, September, so I'm probably going to even do a stream then. That's how committed I am, guys, alright? It depends if uh, we haven't got any other plans. I'm pretty sure we won't. I mean, it's my 19th birthday, nothing particularly special. It's not like last year was my 18th, so I had like a party and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it really. So that's the situation on streams. I'm going to try my best, but not guarantee every Sunday. And as I said in the last stream, if you're ever wondering, am I doing it this Sunday or not? Just go and look on my website, jfb.tv forward slash latest, and it will tell you right there uh, on the left at the top. It will say stream, next stream, and then it will say the date. Um, so you can always go and check that, and I'll always put it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Snapchat. I'll always put it on at least a few days before, just so you guys know what's going on. Um, yeah, so that's the situation on streams. In terms of videos, it's currently going to also be one a week, same as it always was before. It's the streams that have increased, but videos are still going to be once a week, and they're not going to be in any particular order in terms of the games, you know, FSX, P3D, uh, anything like that, or X11, obviously. Uh, they're not going to be in any order, like I'm not going to do one after the other, I always make sure I do them in that order. They are going to be sort of all mixed up depending on, you know, what I think you guys will enjoy the most and what I feel like playing that day, for example, you know. Because um, I think X playing right now will be the least played, simply because it just takes a while to get the hang of it. FSX will be the most played uh, because all my streams are going to be FSX from now on because I because like a like I said all of you pretty much have subscribed for FSX you know that's what you subscribed for over the last five years that's uh, I have eleven and a half thousand subscribers and probably eleven thousand you have subscribed for FSX so I do want to do those weekly streams that are FSX you always know that they're there they're every week and they're always FSX you can always go and watch those you know so that's what I want to do with that which will, yes, probably mean less FSX videos in favour for P3D and X11, but, um, you know, that's just, the way it, that's just the way it goes, you know. If you do enjoy videos over streams, unfortunately that is just the way it is. Um, but yeah, that's the situation on videos then, uh, weekly. And I might one day increase them to twice a week. I did do a poll on my YouTube channel, would you guys rather see, because uh, obviously right now I do one video and one stream a week and I asked would you rather see two videos and one stream a week or one video and two streams a week uh, and you guys overwhelmingly voted for uh, I think it was like 89% voted for two videos and one stream uh, I think that's how it happened um, yeah 89% or something like that uh, so I have decided that if I'm going to increase either one, it will be the video because obviously that videos because that's obviously what you guys want to see. Uh, I think we're just going to cut this corner here a little bit. So we are using our eyes. I'm not even going to use the map. I'm not even going to use the overhead map or anything like that. Uh, I had a look obviously before we took off, but now that we're in the air, I'm not going to use it. I'm pretty sure though it's just at the end over here. That's what I remember of it. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the situation with streams and videos. If I ever do increase it, it will be for the videos. I do assure you. I really want to go inside the cockpit. <laughs> can we switch? Uh, oh yeah, there we go. We can switch to a tower view for a bit, mix it up. It looks like it's going so fast there, doesn't it? Like when you see it from the ground, it looks like it's going so fast. Because it is, to be fair, <laughs> but when you compare it to the air, it's much slower. I mean, we're not even at high altitude, though. I mean, look at this. We're not even at cloud height, which is usually, what, six, 7,000 feet? Let me increase the altitude a little bit. I'm just going to increase the throttle a lot. It might overspeed for a second. But I do want to just get to this sort of cloud level. Because I've sort of just been hovering around a little bit. Seatbelt signs are on, though. So don't worry. I can't, I can't remember the last time I've landed one of these aircraft. There's our overspeed one, I think, inside the cockpit. Or something, I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, I can't even remember the last time I've landed this airplane. Because like I said, I did that video of a water landing, a belly landing in water. But that's not a landing, is it? <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Here we go, we're getting at cloud level now. It's probably about 7,000. Now that we've got some altitude going here. I think we should look at our flight analysis at the end, just see how up and down we've been, because I can imagine we've been not very consistent on the altitude. I'll have a look at the flight analysis once we land, see how it was. Right. I really want to look at that map. I cannot even tell you how bad I want to look at a map right now, just to see if we're going in the right direction this could be so bad if we're not like I'm like I said I'm pretty sure it's at the end here but then now I'm thinking is it is it not over like this way somewhere like at the inlet that goes in I don't know I really don't know guys oh there's our overspeed let me slow back down now that we're leveling out come on It's taking its time, I'm at like 50% throttle almost, there we go. It's a nice time of day as well, the sun at this level. It's not bad is it? Is there not another view we can have? Let's have another view. Outside, no wait, uh, aircraft. Airscare view, tail view, cargo door. Oh, cargo door, great. <laughs> great view. Um, Airscare view. That's alright, let's keep it on that for a second or two. It's very high quality, like the textures on this aircraft, like they're so clear. It's unbelievable. I mean, look at those engines and the reflection on them is really good. Let's have a spin around, see where we're going. I think we are decreasing altitude again. <laughs> oh well. We'll spin around and see what's going on. But we are maintaining that cloud level now at least. I haven't just increased I have just increased the throttle a little bit. Again. Right. I think I can see the inlet now. That is it. Now we may have to like fly by over the airport just so we can see where it is before we uh, start coming in for the approach. Because, uh, like I said, I'm not definite where it is. I'm pretty sure on the general direction of the runway, though, I'm pretty sure it's going to be going like that way or that way. Either one. We'll see, we'll see guys. We are sort of gliding <laughs> at, a, at a descent here, so I'm just going to increase the speed a little bit more again. Because we seem to be sort of just gliding along to try and maintain this altitude. Right, I'm going to cut it now then, and I will see you for the approach. Okay then, we are back, as you can see. Uh, so, we are just flying over the airport now. As you can see, we're a little bit higher than we were. Simply because I just had to increase our altitude just so I could get more of a view. That's the airport there. Like I said, we did have to do a bit of a flyover because I couldn't see it. This mountain, well not mountain, this bit of a hill was in the way when we were too low. So, uh, we're going to make the left turn in now. Um, and basically just swing round and come in for an approach and the airport does look alright <laughs> now that I see it, it does look like an okay size for us to land I wasn't sure 
I mean, I do know, like I said, that airline would just land there, but um, I don't know what uh, what sort of size aircraft that is. So we're going to make this left turn in. Basically swing this thing around 180 degrees, there or thereabouts. Want a sharper turn actually on that. But we did it, we got there without using a GPS, and I put it in fast forward there just so you guys could see that I didn't go inside the cockpit. Um, at least that's what I'm hoping to do in the exiting. Um, sorry if you didn't end up seeing that for whatever reason. Uh, but yeah, I did jump in just for a second to turn off uh, one of the warning alarms, but that was it. I swear, I didn't look at anything. I didn't even look at my altitude, I promise you guys. You can trust me. Right, so here we go. Now coming in pretty much downwind, let's say. We do need a uh, more of a turn, I think. Let's do that. Let's do the turn. Here we are. I think this is the right tower. I hope it is. So we are coming in. I'm not sure that is the right tower, but it's a tower. Look at that. Look at these graphics in FSX sometimes. What is that? I don't even know. Dear God. Right. Here we are, they were coming in for the spin. It was a short flight though, was, wasn't it? I mean, I've recorded 30 minutes so far. And we're now coming in for landing. I mean, I always do these flights faster than in real life. I always do. Because I just go faster. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about like these manual sort of flights, not the uh, realistic ones that I do. Which you can go and check out on my channel if you're interested. And also remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, add me on Snapchat if you like. All the links are in the description. And subscribe, remember, if you're new to the channel. But enough about that, let's actually land. While we wait to come in though. Here's a small airport still. So yeah, we did have to do that little circle around there. Because I didn't know, because I, I remember obviously when we were looking at Google Maps there, I could say that if we're coming in at runway 22 we're going to have to cut across here, but I had no idea what point to cut across, you know, like... I think we we're about there when I noticed this inlet. Oh, we're <laughs> we can't go up for some reason. Let's just bring that back down. What is that? What on earth is that? It looks like I don't know, a bridge just going into the water. So anyway, let's just get some flaps now while we come by whatever that is. Always looks like a pier or something, I don't know. Oh jeez, I need to concentrate on my approach here, we'll keep uh, the nose keeps going up. I have no idea what that is. Or maybe it's like a pipe or something? I don't know. What is that? Oh, it, it looks like a road. I have absolutely no... I've never seen anything like that before in FSX. In the six years I've been playing this game, more than six years, I have no idea what that is. How long have I been playing this game? 2012... Um, something like that, yeah, I think so. Maybe even a little bit more. I'm not sure. Not quite lined up here. A little bit high. Quite a lot high actually, but that's just a classic reproach, isn't it? Let's bring those flaps out though and try and uh, descend back down. And let's just hope the landings are going to be okay. But if you are just tuning in for the landing here, please remember that I said this isn't going to be a realistic 25, flight. It's just to 100. see if we could uh, oh, 2500. It's just to see if we could get to the airport without using autopilot 
GPS or any other navigation basically that was the aim of this flight and we've, accom we've accomplished it <laughs> whether this landing is terrible or not we have accomplished it but we're just lining up here flaps are at full now getting the classic warnings from this aircraft so let's just make a final line up here I really want to go in the cockpit because that's where you get the best view for your approach. Hence why the pilots are sitting there. They're not sitting 50 meters behind the aircraft. I don't get people that can land an aircraft from the outside. I just physically do not get it. I mean, I can do it, but it's just so one thousand so annoying. It's like you can't really tell like where you are in a sense, you know. Like. I don't even know if I'm fully lined up with the back of my camera with the back of the aircraft. Let's get a quick side view before we uh, land. Five hundred. Oh jeez. Four hundred. See, I just cannot get that lined up properly. Minimum three hundred. Two hundred. Oh jeez, here we go. That's a better altitude at least. One hundred. We'll try and get a side view when we uh, just before we touch down. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. There we go. Okay, not bad. Smooth landing at least. Spoilers are up. Speed brake on. I forgot to use the air brake actually. I forgot this aircraft has, aircraft has an air brake. There's this thing at the back here you can see sticking out. But we didn't exactly need it, so that's okay. Alright, let's just taxi off here. Don't know if we're meant to go to the left or right. But remember, if you enjoyed the episode, enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Absolutely hundreds of FSX videos and now X11 and P3D videos on the channel. And like I say, remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Snapchat, whichever you prefer. Uh, I think we're going to go off to the right here. This looks like the main sort of area to go. It's weird that you have to literally taxi to the opposite end of the runway to do that. But there you have it. There you have it, guys. Let's make that turn. And I like how they've painted a, <laughs> uh, a taxi line there, a corner taxi line, onto the grass. Or whatever it is. Right, flaps up. And let's park it. I think we can go inside the cockpit now. Whoa, I didn't realise the turn was right there. We can go inside the cockpit now that, now that uh, our challenge has been completed. In this uh, very short flight. And here we are. At our destination, taxi gate, whatever. Whatever this number is. Oh, a little bit more. A little bit more, please. That's it. Right, beautiful. Parking brake on. There you have it, guys. There you have it. A challenge from one of my viewers. From one of you guys for a landing. Uh, sorry, for a full flight without using autopilot. So a manual flight, but uh, obviously with no GPS or navigation. Uh, if you enjoyed it, press the like button, subscribe if you're new, and guys, I will see you in the next video and stream tomorrow. Thanks for watching.